Welcome to an introduction on how to solve a linear first order differential equation using an integrating factor. One of the most important types of equations we will learn how to solve are linear differential equations. In fact, the majority of the course is about linear differential equations. In this section, we focus on the first order linear differential equation. A first order equation is linear if it can be written in the form of y prime plus p of x times y equals f of x. We call this standard form. The equation above is linear in y and y prime because y and y prime are only raised to the first power and no other functions of y and y prime appear. Solutions of linear differential equations have nice properties. For example, a first order linear differential equation in the form above has a solution wherever p of x and f of x are both defined. The technique of using an integrating factor involves writing the left side of y prime plus p of x times y equals f of x as the derivative of r of x times y, where r of x is some function called the integrating factor. We're going to end up multiplying both sides of the equation by r of x, but if we focus on just the left side for now, multiplying by r of x gives us r of x times y prime plus r of x times p of x times y, which again is going to be equal to the derivative of r of x times y with respect to x. Let's check this derivative by applying the product rule. We would have the first function r of x, times the derivative of the second function, which gives us the y prime, and then plus the second function of y, times the derivative of the first function, which should be the derivative of r of x, which notice must be equal to r of x times p of x. This is important for later when we derive the integrating factor. So again, if we multiply both sides of the equation by r of x, we have the equation shown here on the bottom left, which is r of x times y prime, plus r of x times p of x times y, equals r of x times f of x. But again, now we can replace the left side of the equation with the derivative of r of x times y with respect to x. Once we have the equation in this form, we will integrate both sides of the equation with respect to x. Notice on the right side, we have a function of x, and therefore integrating is not a problem. On the left side, we have the derivative of a function, and when we integrate the left side, the integral will undo the derivative, leaving us with r of x times y. And now let's find the integrating factor r of x that makes all of this work. Again, applying the product rule to the derivative of r of x times y with respect to x, it's important to notice that r prime must be equal to r of x times p of x. Again, this is from the product rule. We'll use a differential equation r prime of x equals r of x times p of x to derive the integrating factor r of x. When we do this, we'll find that r of x is equal to e to the power of the integral of p of x dx. And now let's show where this comes from. Again, starting with r prime of x equals r of x times p of x, we divide both sides by r of x. Next, we integrate both sides with respect to x. And now focusing on the integral on the left, this should remind us of natural log where u is equal to the denominator of r of x, and therefore differential u is equal to r prime of x dx. Integrating on the left, we have natural log absolute value of r of x. We could have plus a constant, but we're looking for any function r of x, let's just assume the constant is zero. And we don't know the function p of x on the right, and therefore we leave the right side as an integral. The next step is to solve for r of x, which we can do two ways. One way is to write the log equation as an exponential equation, where because we have natural log, we have log base e. The corresponding exponential equation is e raised to the power of the integral on the right must equal the absolute value of r of x, but since e to a power is always positive, we can drop the absolute value. The other option is to exponentiate both sides of the equation with the base of e, meaning e to the power of natural log absolute value of r of x must equal e to the power of the integral. The left side simplifies nicely to the absolute value of r of x, and we can drop the absolute value, giving us r of x equals e to the power of the integral of p of x dx. This is the integrating factor that we need to make this process work. And now let's go through the entire process, starting with the first order linear differential equation in standard form. Once we have the equation in this form, we multiply both sides of the equation by the integrating factor, which again is e to the power of the integral of p of x dx. Now we know the left side of the equation is equal to the derivative of r of x times y, where r of x is the integrating factor. The next step is to integrate both sides of the equation with respect to x. On the left, the integral undoes the derivative, leaving us with the integrating factor times y. 
On the right, when we integrate, we'd have a constitutive integration, which is why we have a plus c on the right. And the last step is to solve for y. We can either multiply both sides of the equation by one over the integrating factor, or we can multiply both sides by e to the power of the opposite of the integral of p of x dx. We'll use the latter, which gives us y equals e to the power of the opposite of the integral of p of x dx times the quantity, the integral of e to the power of the integral of p of x dx times f of x dx plus c. Now, of course, in practice, we would evaluate these integrals, but if we weren't able to, we could use this formula to make approximations about the solution. I hope you found this helpful.